everybody, it's Travis, your official Blizzard review guy. And today I'm here with a video to show you how you can make your own power cables. So all the Blizzard fixtures come with a power cable and you may have noticed they're not the traditional IEC. A lot of um, fixtures come with that type of cable. Something you'd find with a lot of your maybe home appliances, computers and that sort of thing. Um, the ones that come with your Blizzard fixtures are a Neutrik compatible connector that are twist locked. So it's actually more secure for your lights when you're at an event, someone happens to trip over a cable, who knows what might happen. It's not going to get loose and it's not going to come out of the fixture. So that's really nice. Now you might be in a situation where the cable that comes with the fixture is too short, too long, whatever, and you need a specific length cable for your setup. So today we're going to make a custom length cable using um, a Neutrik cable right off of a cable that came with one of my fixtures. This, so I've got the G70 on top of a truss totem. And you can see I've got some cables inside the truss. And you can see here, this is a scrim that gets stretched out. You know, a lot of you do that to make your, your truss glow with an up light at the bottom. And it's really nice when I have it like this where I've got the DMX cables and power cable is going to be attached right to the truss here. So it can go right into the, the trailer or the truck, you know, pre-wired and all you have to do is set the, the fixture on top and all we're gonna have to do is just plug in the cords that are just dangling right here at the top. So I've got the two DMX in and out. And so when I plug in, this is the, the power cord that comes with the G70. Once you see you know, it hanging here, there's the end of it, which is, you know, a few, at least a couple, two feet shy from the floor. So it would really be kind of a waste and a hassle to find an extension cord just to go from there down. Plus, it's kind of defeating the purpose of having this nice twist lock connector by having this break in the cable if I have to put an extension cord there, you know, because then that connection can become unplugged. So instead, we're going to make our own power cable that is exactly the length that we need to go from the top of the truss and plug into the back of the G70 and have it end up at the bottom with our DMX connectors there to get plugged in. So let's go over the tools required. You're gonna need obviously cable the length that you want it to be so you can get that from the hardware store. I actually found at Home Depot today, this is Husky brand and it's exactly what I need. It's 16 gauge, which is actually a little thicker than the power cable that comes with the G70s. That is 18 gauge. So this is a little bit thicker, a little bit nicer, and it's eight feet, which is perfect. The trusses that I have are just a little over six and a half feet. They're two meters. And so this will give me a little extra on both ends, of course, to plug into the fixture at the top and then have a little extra at the bottom so that I can plug it in at the bottom of the truss. Now, this is a pretty cool product that you can find. Like I said, I got this at Home Depot. This eight footer is about $9. And this is how it comes. So you've got your regular Edison connector on the one end, and then it's got the bare wire at the other end. So we're gonna be able to put our connector right onto that. Other tools that we need, a tiny screwdriver, Phillips head. Optional is a tiny Sharpie, and I'll show you later what that's gonna be for. Some wire cutters, uh, some strippers, a multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter, that's okay. Although you can find some cheap ones on uh, like Newegg or Cyber Guys for like 10 bucks, a digital multimeter. Um, you don't need it, you can just watch this video uh, to kind of determine which wires are supposed to go where. You may or may not need a soldering iron. I will, and I'll show you why. And of course, get yourself an adult beverage of your choice. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the connector from the original cable that came with the G70s. So you just twist off this bottom part here. Then this pulls off. And then you've got this plastic piece. Which also comes off. Then we can see our three wires. So you've got white, green, and black. Okay, and then the tiny screwdriver is what we're gonna to use to release these three wires from the connector. So the one reason why I mentioned we need a multimeter is just to confirm which wires are connected to which pins on our Edison connector here. The round peg there should be the ground. So just to confirm, you, can, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and place one of my contacts here on the round pin 
and then go ahead and just touch the green. And we hear the beep there, so we know that the, the green is the ground wire connected to the ground pin. Um, again, we're just doing this just to be safe, just to make sure that it is wired how we would assume. Then I'm going to the right pin. And that one is the black wire. And so then process of elimination tells us that the other pin, the one on the left side of our Edison connector, should be the white. And it is. Okay, so then the next step, you need to remember that they're going to go back into the same spots. So white's going to go there, green in the middle, and black on this side. A trick to help you, and this is why I mentioned the Sharpie as being optional, if you'd like to mark it, feel free to mark it right in the connector. So the white one goes there, so I can put a W here just to remind myself once I get these wires off there that the white is going to go back into that spot. Okay, then do the same for the green and the black if you wish, or at least just mark two of them that way you know that the green one then is going to go in the middle. Then we can go ahead and take our small Phillips head screwdriver and remove these wires. Now you don't have to unscrew these all the way. They're actually just clamping down a spring to hold those wires in there. Then you should just be able to pull them out. So there they are. Then an important step um, is actually removing those two, or the, uh, the sleeve that screws on to the bottom of the connector. Remember to remove that from the original cord, this guy here, that kept the connector together. Take that off. And it's very important to remember, I often forget when I'm making my own cables to do this, but remember to put this on your new cable now. So now I have the new cable from Home Depot. Put this guy on there right away before we forget. Otherwise, we're going to uh, be upset with ourselves later. Then if you want to, you can go ahead and put the strain relief. That's what this is. This is the white plastic piece here is a strain relief. If you want to put that on now, you can. This isn't as crucial because it, it is open here, so you could just spread it apart and put this on there at any time. Um, but I like to put it on just so I don't forget it. Here's the one issue I ran into with this particular product from Home Depot. If I went ahead and screwed these into here, and finished up putting our connector together, what's going to happen is I'm going to have some bare wire showing here after the connector because they you know, cut this outside rubber shield back so far. Um, it doesn't need to be that, that far back. We're going to have some, some bare wire showing here. So I'm going to need to cut mine down, trim these down, and then as you can see, these already have some solder at the end of them. That's to make that connection, the electrical connection, that much better when this touches the contacts inside the connector. So we're gonna have that's what I need the solder for is to do this again after I trim these down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. It's electric! Okay, so now I'm just going to take a little bit of solder and just tint the end of those of those bare wires there. It just takes a little bit of solder and on a brand new cable you'll see the solder actually melt. It should just get soaked up right into that cable real nice. If you've never soldered before, this is just a quick little lesson here. This is pretty simple. We're just putting a little bit of solder on that just make our connection that much more solid, make, make it easier for the electricity to flow into the connector. see there we've got just, a, just enough solder there on those ends. This will help make a nice connection into the connector. So as I said before it's very important that you remember to put the bottom cap 
of the connector onto your cable before you screw it onto the connector. So that piece again is this one, the one that's that's going to screw onto the bottom of our connector. So make sure you put that on there at this point, and then you can also put on the strain relief. And now it's time to screw in our wires. So I'm going to start with the white one there. <clears throat> Remember, if you marked these, you're going to look for the W that you wrote on there. So how this works is you just you're going to stick it into the hole there at the bottom. <clears throat> and then it is a spring so when I tighten this screw it's clamping down onto the wire so I won't be able to pull it out at least not very easily anyway so the black one is on the opposite side Again, give a little tug, make sure it's not coming out of there. And the last one is the green one in the middle. Our ground wire. Okay, so just make sure all those are nice and snug. Those springs are good. And they're not coming out of there. Okay, so now we can move up the notice how much shorter you know the bare wire is here or the uh you know the individual wires there are not as far back so i, I cut that back and <clears throat> made it shorter so we don't have any of those wires sticking out of the bottom go ahead and put our strain relief on there there is a specific way the uh, strain relief should fit nicely right there you can see it's got the notches there that fit in so then we're going to go ahead and put this piece on. Goes through just like that. Then the last step would be to screw on that bottom piece. This is what tightens it all up and, and actually tightens the strain relief. So that when you pull on the cable at all, it's not pulling on those wires that are screwed into the connector. So we tighten that up. It's always good to check your cables and make sure that's tight every once in a while as well. And then there you can see the strain relief is clamping down on the outer part, the outer jacket of our cable, keeping it nice and tight. And there we go. So now we've got our new 8-foot power cable. So now I've got the power cable and I'm going to plug it into the G70 here on top and just show you that this one here now is perfect length. So I'm going to tape it to the inside of the truss with the DMX cables and you can see it there. I'm going to have just enough extra little pigtail hanging off the bottom of the truss to give myself just a little slack so I can plug it in. learning how to make your own power cable. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and like for more videos. Once again, I'm Travis, your official Blizzard review guy and basement hero. See you next time. Ah! Oh!